Hey, everybody, this is Amy Bernier with Being Brave with Amy B. And today our guest is the wonderful Justin Blackburn. <laughs> he is a coach and he guides people uh, to love, to love themselves, to see the love in others, um, and to realize that they're coming from love each and every moment. And he helps them choose that more deeply anything to add to that justin oh, it sounded excellent thank you that okay awesome so um welcome welcome everyone this is season two of being brave with amy b and this show is all about amplifying diverse stories of bravery from everyday bravery that we might even call small steps of bravery which i don't really believe in small steps of bravery but larger steps of bravery all every time we make a choice to be brave in our lives i believe it should be celebrated and honored and this is a look into all the different ways we can be brave and how that shows up for different people so Justin is our guest today, and I'm just going to start this off with asking you, what is your definition of being brave? Um, I guess it would be going above your surroundings and your the way you feel. So being greater than your, uh, yeah, I guess surroundings. Uh, yeah. Okay. So being greater than your surroundings. Would you give us an example of what you mean by that? Yeah, like, so, um, you know, yesterday I woke up feeling kind of dizzy and I, I'm deaf in my left ear. So I had some inner ear stuff and uh, inner clogged up little stomach ache, but I didn't say that that's who I am. So I went greater than that to, and yesterday I felt ended up kind of transcending it, uh, did a couple of great coaching calls. Today, I woke up with it a little bit, so I'm still kind of um, in that process of that, but I would say that's being greater than your conditions, surroundings, whatever you want to call it. Um, another example would be, look at your bank account. There's no money in there, something like that, or not as much money as you want. Can you be greater than that vibration? Can you walk into a room full of millionaires and, you know, ha feel like you're the fucking, you know, God of gods, you know, can you have a very small penis and walk around like you have a very big dick, you know, it's like being greater than your conditioning. So to me, it sounds like the way I'm hearing this is you may be having experiences that you're not like a huge fan of, but instead of identifying with like, I am my bank account or I am my little penis or I am, you know, whatever comes after I am in the case that we usually attach to those things that we're afraid of, right? That I, I am not this circumstance, I am greater. Circumstance, than. yeah, that was the word I'm looking for. Yeah. That was a good word, yeah. Okay. <laughs> circumstance conditioning, they all kind of fit in that same little, you know, because if you're surrounded by an energy of feeling less than, you know, can you overpower that energy with your own energy? You know, can you become the power in the room? And mm -hmm. what happens is, is energy follows thought. Mm -hmm. So it follows that into whatever you want to create from there. Mm -hmm. I feel like in my own experiences, like the, the fe fear kind of leads has led my identification with the things that I'm really not appreciating happening right now. So I've definitely identified fe through fear of like the, the low bank account number, or for me in particular, sometimes it's around like, God, I don't know where I'm going to live. <laughs> That's been an experience I've had. And I think that the, the kind of like thoughts that come from that are really, really, they like spiral downwards very, very quickly. Um, do yeah, you- Yeah, because those are, those are like very fearful. Uh, there's a lot of moment, there's a lot of cell momentum on that kind of shit, right? Because it's your livelihood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something that gets me is what I was talking about earlier is, uh, I want to say it did, I don't want to give it any power. Uh, like when I was 14, uh, I cut myself 
and I went deaf in my left ear. So it was a weird thing, cut my face and cut my wrists and for some reason went deaf in my left ear um the doctors never really knew what it was to be honest and um so what trips me out is kind of at times is like health stuff right because you know that is going deaf is scary out of nowhere when your body just kind of stops working uh, when it doesn't feel like there was any reason there. Obviously, there's a vibrational reason and all that kind of stuff. But when I'm 14, I don't know that. So I'm attached to that fear pretty deeply because that deep that fear represents life or death, right? Mm-hmm. So if I didn't really give a shit about it, it wouldn't really bother me that much, right? If I didn't have a very strong desire to heal, to hear, and to feel awesome, right? So it's kind of like, when you have strong desire, if you're not letting that what you desire in, you're going to experience the back end of that. And that's not going to feel good. That's going to beat you up, right? Like if I really want this and it's not happening, that feels really bad. Then say, ah, whatever, I don't care either way. Eh, you know, which is, you know, a way to manifest shit. But I like to, you know, I want to manifest what I really want. <laughs> yes. that powerful place i don't want to like you know fake myself out of feeling the feelings which i know you know some people do where it's like they're not really living from their heart they're kind of detached that's a way to manifest you know i'm just detached from what i desire and then it comes yeah i think that that's definitely that detachment that owning the feelings allowing them to move through And then, you know, setting my intention to something that I really want rather than what's happening now um, and then detaching from the outcome. I think that that's that's the piece where I get tripped up oftentimes um, because that the experience of fear that I've had um, around, we'll just keep using money because that's something that's floated around for me a couple of times. And I know is common for people, you know, it's a common like every day because everywhere you go, you know, when I had money, lots of money, like I would spend money and not even think about it. But when I started, had an experience of resigning from my teaching job and getting part time jobs, primarily focusing on my business, the experience of putting gas in my car, the experience of going to the grocery store and buying food, the experience of saying yes to spending time with my friends, you know, let's say at a bar or a restaurant or something, it changed my, it, instead of being open, oh, this is open and easy and fun. It, it turned everyday things um, for me into more experiences of more contraction and more contraction and more contraction. And that's something that, I mean, that I think a lot of people, especially during the current times are, are, are going from an experience of not really thinking about certain things. And then now there's just a more intensity around health and money and, um, uncertainty can really trigger those those fears do you yeah, I, I, but i think that also can be not to invalidate anybody feeling any way but i sure. also think that can be an excellent experience for you because you get more focused right mm. for example um i i kind of upgraded my business um recently where i um i was doing uh you know working with certain people for like kind of pay what you can if I felt called to do that Mm -hmm. and I stopped doing that in in December and because you know I I had a lot of clients and everything's going great but some of them I felt like you know I would rather have less clients paying me more than having a bunch of clients paying me less right so then I feel like I'm really awesome at what I do and my clients are getting great results so I was like all right let's cut that off so I was going into January thinking, I don't know, because I I had a belief system that I could get lots of clients paying me less than my offer, some paying me what I offer, but Mm. I I had that belief system. So it was continuously Mm -hmm. uh, happening, which is great. But then I was like, no, I'm going to cut that off. So I know that this belief system of getting more clients at a higher rate is not as um, aligned. 
So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be more conscious about how I spend money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even though, so I would go into, okay, like, for example, I took Gianna out to dinner at the beginning of the, when I dropped into this. And I was like, I spent like $70 on like a mediocre meal. And I was like, <laughs> all right, this is going to come back to me times three. Right. And then uh, last week I had two clients pay in full for a month. Um, and I kind of, I stopped doing it this week because I made a, more money than I thought I was going to. But now. Well, after, that's amazing. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but after that, I, um, this even this week and I you know I have more money than I thought I I want to kick back into that energy because I think that feels good and what I'm saying is being intentional with it so when Mm. you're throwing money around you know it's not I'm not saying anything's bad right but for me right now what felt good to me is being intentional right like okay boom I have this amount of money even if I have you know, which I do, I have more money than I anticipated this month or whatever, but that doesn't matter. I still can live very consciously. So cutting back that not, you know, obviously I'm not, obviously it's scary and I'm not trying to invalidate anybody's feelings or yours, but it can also be a great way to consciously create financially. Mm. So when I, let's say I don't have that much money, well, okay, then this is going, I'm going to really put my intention into when I spend this money. You know, if I go out to eat, I'm going to really enjoy the fuck out of whatever I'm eating, right? Or if I put gas in my car, I'm going to be very more intentional about where I drive. And that only leads to great things. Mm. You know, is it uh, Michael Beckwith probably ripped this off from somebody. I'm not trying to say he's not amazing, but I don't know. I, I think I'd heard this before I heard him say it. We don't have an uh, attention deficit. Who's I was diagnosed with ADD when I was like twelve. Uh, we don't yeah. have an attention attention deficit disorder. We have an intention deficit disorder. Mm. You know, it's like writing your intentions. It's, it's funny with me. Is like I have this book that I carry around. And I write my intentions in it. And when things are going really great, I kind of stop because I forget about it because I don't care or I'm not thinking about it. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm lost in how amazing everything is. But, you know, when I had that thing yesterday that I woke up with, I was like, okay, back to getting the intent, back to writing Mm. an intention. Because whether I'm feeling great or I'm feeling um, a little off, this is an incredible, uh, for me at least, an incredible exercise. So whether I'm rich or I'm feeling rich or I'm feeling like lack, that's still a great exercise to do is whatever I do, okay, I'm going to spend this money. I actually got that from Nick, Nick Tilia, uh, amazing coach uh, who I've worked with for a while. Love the guy. He said he went into everything I spend comes back times three or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what we want to do when we're creating is being intentional, right? So when we spend from you know, oh, I have so much money, blah, 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 just wherever. Nothing wrong with it. Not putting it down. That's great. But when we do it from intention, Mm. it comes back and we're more conscious of what we're doing. You know, it's like doing anything from intention. You know, yesterday Mm. I was playing basketball. Actually, it was a couple of days ago. I was playing basketball and these guys, it was me and this like high school kid that really sucked. Versus these two dudes, this one guy that said he played college. I don't really believe him. Uh, <laughs> I looked it up for him. I couldn't find him on there. And this <laughs> other guy that was taller, bigger, and better than I was. And they were kicking our ass like every game. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I am going to win this game. I put my intention. I imagined we're going to win 16 to 14. And that's what I imagined. It's kind of let go through. And on the last game we played, because we played like six games, I went off. I hit like – four straight threes at the end of the game, like with them all in my face, pump fake, throwing it up. And we won 16 to 14. And then right afterwards, I was like, holy shit, I forgot. I, I had put that intention out there to make that happen. So it's like, anytime you live with the intention, you're putting your, you're opening the door for it to happen, right? You're, you're setting the path. 
it's like the difference between walking in a wooded area where there's no path, right? And you're having to climb it versus a nice path to wherever you're going, right? Hiking, mm. walking up a mountain, it's a path laid out before you versus I'm going to have to make my own way, right? That's that's my definition of kind of like the intention, what, what that feels like to me, intention setting. So like, what, I'm not saying I always do it. Um, right. But when I do, my life seems to be way better or things get, yeah. And I, yeah, and I, yeah. I what just got to get more in the habit of it. Yeah. What I'm taking away from what you're saying is when I feel like when we're in that fear response, we kind of in, in many ways, like slow down and become like hyper aware of everything. And what's coming up is what if we were to use that instead of like becoming hyper aware and then like increasing our fear and our contraction even more, what if we took that hyper awareness and then said, oh, now I get to every thought that that pops up or feeling that pops up, like instead of like just For me, when I focus on a fear, it just feels like the fear becomes exponential. But what if I use that contraction as like a, oh, pay attention now, and then set an intention around whatever you're hyper-focused on? Like, as much as we don't like to be afraid, um, there might be a power, a shifting power in that moment to then be very intentional about what we're experiencing i had a um, yeah i had a call uh this is actually a couple of months ago with a client of mine and um they had a um they were like i'm gonna tell you something it's really embarrassing da, 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 da. and i was like it's not embarrassing and they're like oh it is and it's like i'm like no it's not uh you know that's what i'm <laughs> thinking like you know you can say whatever nothing's embarrassing in that kind of safe safe space of unconditional love Absolutely. and they're like i have this thing on my head that i um kind of scratch all the time right it's kind of like when i'm anxious i dig into my scalp or something Mm -hmm. and um what we transformed that into was i was like okay when do you do that oh it's when i'm anxious so let's Mm -hmm. turn that into an anxiety button so when i push this button i know that i'm anxious Mm -hmm. right so that goes from i'm anxious unconsciously to oh scratching my anxiety button what am i anxious about Right. Yes. And from there, we broke down the things that were anxious and uh, they were anxious about, and they had an amazing transformation by just doing that. I haven't followed up with them since. I mean, we, we still work together, but I haven't followed up since the anxiety. Wow. Things. But that, that's a great thing because if you go into, okay, unconscious, unconscious, and then you're like, okay, I'm doing that again. This is an anxiety button. This is letting me know that I'm anxious you get to go from what do I want to create now instead of like, oh my God, life is overwhelming. Right, right. You go from being kind of unaware to aware. And when we're aware, that's when we have a power of choice or even like the opportunity to to ask a question, like you said, about like, what is, what it, oh God, oh wait, when I do that, I'm letting myself know that I'm anxious. And then you can have the opportunity too to go and say, like, what part of me is anxious and love that part. Exactly. Totally. Um, so this whole podcast can we can have conversations about many things. And prior to now, you and I had a conversation about quite a few opportunities or times in your life when you were brave. Is there one in particular that you would like to share today? Um, sorry about that. Um, one, um, one that's, uh, coming to mind and, and this is going to come to mind. So I'm just going to trust that it's like, um, and I don't even say I was brave. I was more of an asshole, but, um, (laughs) I remember. Okay in high school, like, um, uh, there was my English teacher, we had to do research papers for something, right? And uh, all the kids before class were sitting around going like, 
you know, this teacher doesn't know anything. She's a complete moron. Oh my God, I am so stressed. And as a person that didn't really care about school and didn't really do shit. And honestly, my mom paid this person from Bob Jones to write my research paper. And I got a 50 on it because they didn't um, quote something properly. Um, anyway, so that was pretty funny uh, to my mom. Uh, she paid for it and I still failed. But I, I stood up and I said, uh, hey, uh, teacher, uh, class doesn't feel like you know what you're doing, right? They feel like you're not helping us out on this at all. And uh, she flipped. She's like, class, do you feel this way? And they were like, no. And she took me outside and she cussed me out. And uh, I don't want to say she cut, she flipped out on me. I don't know if she used profanity, but it was like, I am an English genius and you, you know, just like went, went off on me. Right. And that wasn't really, I was just kind of, I just said things cause I didn't care. I don't know why I did it, but I, I, it, it was a, it was a really awesome thing where I would speak up for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I got boom, hit in the face for speaking up for myself, mm -hmm. it was a really great thing that I always did. And it wasn't really conscious being brave. Um, you know, like I had a poem, this lead, like, I remember I had, I had a poem, uh, I put out three, almost four years ago now called white people us that went viral and, you know, 40 million people saw it and, and, and um, a lot of uh, black people hit me up as like, thank you so much for no white person who kind of said that. And, and other people were like, you were so brave for saying that. And it didn't really feel brave. It just felt mm -hmm. like speaking the truth. So right. coming back to, and it is brave, but it didn't feel like brave to me, but that is in my opinion, a brave thing. Uh, going back to the high school where I would always speak up and say things they would get me in trouble but I said it and that kind of taught me not to have a filter mm -hmm. which kind of led me to who I am now which is expressing myself well so I, I have to say Justin like you're definitely what one of the many things that I like about you is that you do you honor your own your truth and the truth of others like ferociously you know you you and I'm remembering back to my high school time and I'm also remembering being a teacher and I'm not a teacher anymore for a reason and it's because like I didn't feel that like students were genuinely truly 100% being honored in the way that they deserve to they were just being you know, quantified and measured and, you know, whatever. Exactly. I feel like yeah. when you, when you take something that's qualitative, whether that's how you teach something or in students' cases, how you learn something, when you try to turn a qualitative thing into something that you can measure, and then therefore you measure to say whether you're good or not, and like have very like black and white ways of thinking, everything gets fucked up. Totally. And I believe like I was a, I was an afraid person for a really long time. I would look around for like the rules of the school or this class or this club or, you know, my family or society or this job. And I always would like be hyper aware so that I could blend in so that I knew the rules so that I could follow them. So no one would not like me or no one would whatever. But over time, as I've grown, I realized I was never that, I was never actually that person. I was always like the rebel that wanted to say the thing, that wanted to stand up in class and be like, yo, like, this is stupid. Like, why are we doing this? That happened a lot to me in college, but I, I didn't, I felt too afraid of the kind of consequences that you're even, you're even describing to, to do that. So I want to honor you for being a disrupt, a disruptor of sorts, you know, by, by doing that, because whether you were, you had negative consequences or whatever the ripple effect is, the ripple effect that I believe that was happening was actually influencing every kid, 
every adult and probably people that were in that room and that were not in that room that observed you standing up like that. They probably thought about it and were like, well, I don't know why the fuck he's doing that. Obviously they were afraid or they would have said, yeah, we agree with Justin, but you were showing that there can be another way. And I believe that kind of seed planting changes lives. And you were doing that as like as a young person. And that's pretty fucking incredible. Thank you. you. I take that to heart. I really appreciate that. And and my whole point of saying all that was that it's brave, but I feel like, like I was saying with, with the poem that I wrote it, it's truth. So like, I don't feel brave when people are like, Oh, you were brave for putting that out there back then or whatever. And it's like, no, I mean, I got some death threats and things like that, but it didn't feel brave because it just feels like saying the truth. And that's yeah. kind of what I was kicking back where I was like, back in high school, I didn't feel like, oh, this is brave for me saying what I said. I probably also kind of said it just to fuck with the lady because that's sure. how I kind of was. Yeah. But it was like, I'm just saying the truth. So it doesn't actually feel brave in your body um, because it's like, yeah, I'm speaking the truth. And yeah. so, but it is brave because we're in a world where speaking the truth is, I think it's getting a lot better, but you know, it can get you bad consequences, right? Totally. You know? And that happened to me a lot. And I mean, the bad consequences I had I, were, you know, I did, um, I did have the Secret Service come after me once. That was pretty crazy. But, Whoa! Uh, but, I think that um, might have to be for another episode because I'm going to have to wrap up. But I want to say, Justin, you're truly someone that lives their truth in so many different ways. And from the from the conversation that we're having now, plus the conversations that we've had before, you've been in this practice of living your truth for quite a while. And you ha- are perfectly aware that, you know, it makes other people uncomfortable. It makes our society uncomfortable. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It's what we need more of. And um, I want to give you an opportunity to, Justin is an amazing coach, as you can imagine, just from the short conversation that we've had here. How can, if people are listening to this and they're like, oh my God, like Justin's amazing. Or, or maybe you have a different reaction. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe we did that. Both are indicators to you that what Justin brings to the table is something that impacts you. So if people are, if you're having this kind of response to Justin, that means that who he is, is, is something that can be medicine for you, that can be helpful for you in your life. So where can people reach out to you in order to find out more about you and your services and your offers? Um, yeah. if they're interested in working with you. Totally. I really appreciate that. I just want to say like, um, you know, I have till, uh, I have like 17 minutes too. So oh, you do. Yeah. Okay. I, I maybe said, I set my timer wrong. Yeah. I said till two, uh, we, if you want to, we can keep that, but yeah, I got, but, but we can, I can say this and we can go on to something else or we can stop whatever you feel. I just wanted to let you know. Yep. You um, can keep, keep going. Well, why don't we do this? And then we'll have a little bit more time. So we'll we will continue. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, um, you can just find me on uh, Facebook at Justin Blackburn. Um, You can email me at inspiretheground at gmail.com. I'm on um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. I'm on all the things. So yeah, just find me. And yeah, we can, uh, you can hit me up if, if what I do resonates with you. And, you know, my coaching is, is just about um, helping people embody that truth, living in that truth. Because like I said, when it's natural to feel amazing and feel into your truth, life is really awesome. And it feels really good because it does feel really great to speak your truth. And, um, you know, I feel like that's where a lot of people are having a rough time because they're dismissing who they are. They're dismissing their truth. Can't speak your truth. Uh, things go bad. Anytime in my life, I haven't been able to speak my truth. I'm thinking of my last relationship. 
uh, long-term relationship before Gianna, it didn't really go well, right? Like I was with this person, awesome person, cool person, but you know, I, I had a pattern of like allowing women to kind of um, overpower me, I guess, um, kind of be more, um, kind of be a people pleaser. And I remember just, you know, having lots of panic attacks and I was living mm. in anxiety. I mean, I was living in anxiety in Costa Rica, having a really rough time where I felt like, you know, I'm in Costa Rica, I'm working at this yoga spa, I should be in some sort of heaven, but I'm literally like living in just the most intense panic I ever lived in uh, every day because I didn't feel like I could speak my truth to this person. Right. So like, I, I think I had an anxiety attack and this person told me basically like, shut up, you know, just like, you know, you can't be doing that stuff. Cause well, my anxiety triggered hers. And so she wanted me to shut up. So I did. And I, you know, I feel like living out of your truth is really horrible for every aspect of your body. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you brought up the body because that was my source of like breakdown slash breakthrough as well. And that was what I had, what led me to realize that my overgiving and my overachieving and all of these different things that I thought were like, I had to do these things or else um, were things that kept me focused on other people and not focused on myself. So there was this habitual pattern of pushing down my own emotions and what I wanted. Like I didn't give a voice to all the different parts of me just because I was never really taught how to do that. And it really yeah. came from my body and my back pain and anxiety and depression were really, um, not character flaws like I thought, you know, they're really exactly. just pointers saying yes. like this, something you're not, you're not fully expressed. You're yes. living in a, you're not living your truth to put it totally. like you, like you would. And I think that, you know, when a lot of these kinds of awakenings or breakthroughs happen, when we think we've done everything we were supposed to do, or like in your case, like I'm in this beautiful heavenly place and you're supposed to feel relaxed and all of this stuff. And it like the experience you're having in your body is incongruent with your surroundings. And I think that this might be something we can expand on a little bit because if your body is not feeling good, it's, there's a message there. Yes. Yes, totally. Um, so I think with, you know, with the pandemic and with um, people isolating themselves and they're just being a heightened awareness around money and health and division and things like that. I, I, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that people are probably not feeling as a collective, people are not feeling very good in their bodies. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, we're taught to live, I mean, especially now, and you know, I, I understand it to a certain extent, but we're really taught a lot of fear right now. Be scared, do this, do that. This disease is going to come get you, you know? And I'm not, Absolutely. Like, not honoring the disease, its power and not honoring, uh, you know, the people that have passed away and have suffered from it. I'm not saying that isn't true, but I am saying that I believe that we have more power in our health than um, they are telling us. And we are, you know, if you listen, like, and I can just go back to, you know, when I was a kid and went deaf in my left ear the doctor, one of them told me I was lying. The other one told me I was never going to hear again. Nobody told me what was going on. So, mm -hmm. you know, I felt as a kid extremely, and this was deep down, like I detached from my body. You know, I can't trust these people that I'm supposed to trust. And that led me into spirituality. So it was kind of a beautiful thing because who can I trust? I can trust God. I can trust source. I can trust, you know, same thing. I can trust vibration. And if I get down and I can understand that, like what's actually happening, you know, like, you know, people like Dr. Joe Dispenza or Bruce Lipton or these people that really break down scientifically what happens in the brain and the body and how to transform that. So we don't have to feel like, you know, literally up until like the 90s, 
it's i mean we live in such like hilarious times i mean it's kind of sad but we really thought that your genes created your life right like if you had the alcoholic gene i can't drink my dad was an alcoholic i have his genes we were really taught that the genes created your life and mm -hmm. if you think that you're completely you know we thought i mean it was like up until like the 90s where you know where, where it was like actually transformed in the textbooks and a mm -hmm. lot of textbooks i don't even you know i don't i don't read the textbook so i don't know but this is just from you know reading this stuff that they that's what they thought that's what we were taught and you know even now like with my mom and my parents and other and some people you know like for example, my uh, great uncle uh, got cancer and, you know, it's like, just go with what they say. Or like uh, one of my mom's friends got diagnosed with dementia, early onset dementia. I'm like, boom, put her on to Joe Dispenza. You can heal yourself. And she's like, no. And the doctor's just like, yeah, you got a couple years. And it's like, what motherfucker? Like, you know, I went through that. I'm very sensitive to that because I went through that in my left ear and still go through it because I didn't heal it. And I'm still deaf in my left ear. But just mm -hmm. being told that, like, you're basically fucked is yeah. a huge trigger for me because I think it's complete bullshit. And I think we live in a world where they tell you that and you self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like uh, I had another great aunt or my aunt, I, yeah, I guess it's a great aunt, some cousin or somebody through marriage or something. They were told that, you know, they weren't feeling amazing, but they went into the doctor and the doctor's like, you got cancer, you got six months to live. They died in a week, you know? Whoa. So it's like, we don't understand that the body, the we're energy first, right? We're not, we're like 99.99% .99 energy. And the physical world, is an extension of the energy that we are, our physical being. And because doctors don't get that, you know, I'm not putting them down, that's what they're taught, but we, we run into a lot of problems in the body and don't understand that like, you know, it'll make me laugh when like science, like some, I'll see some like, um, you know, report or something and somebody will share like, you know, uh, being happy is actually good for you. Like, yeah, no shit, science. Right. Like, science says <laughs> that if you smile, you'll feel good. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's yeah. so ridiculous that we're, I feel like we're just light years behind in a lot of ways, uh, you know? And yeah, so I, I just think that we're very, we don't promote empowerment in our world. And that's not a political thing. That's a, in my opinion, the left thing and the right thing, all people, we don't really promote empowerment, you know? And so we're not empowered as a society because, you know, you get what you focus on. Yeah. I think that's a really powerful statement. What you just said that we're not, we're not taught to be empowered in our society. And I think yeah. that a lot of a lot of, you know, the people that are, that are into more into spirituality or an energy and, and vibration and things like I've talked to so many people and it's through challenging experiences of, you know, getting diagnoses or, you know, having like a breakdown, like emotional breakdown. It's it, what I've seen is it's been like physical, emotional, like all of these different things where the system didn't serve them and they were no longer willing to, to give all their power to a system because they had this felt sense that there's more. Totally. Uh, that exactly. there's more. And then they go on this, um, they go on this journey if you will to seek what feels true to them and when that's found they realize they've had the power all along like that's totally. been a story i've heard over and over and over again you know and i feel that that spirituality and um kind of recognition of more than what we can perceive with our with our our senses um i feel like this that is the that is the path that we're all kind of headed 
headed towards and some of us. Yeah. yeah. And some of us have had these experiences before others so that we could share our experiences and lead, lead through sharing our stories and, and help people one step at a time, you know? Yeah. Cause, cause people are freaking out and you know, well, send them my way. I'll help them. There we can, we can, we can make a different choice. And I really feel that inter interdependence is, is another thing. Co real, true community of support and encouragement and, and help is, is key for that too. Yeah. What, what definitely. do you think? Yeah. Definitely think that, you know, you know, we're, we're one. I mean, I definitely think like we have our own individual consciousness um, as well, like our own subjective consciousness. I mean, we're all one. And I think within that oneness, we also have this subjective consciousness that we're experiencing life through. And I think, you know, someone connected to that, who they are is way more powerful than, you know, a million people that aren't. Uh, Abraham Hicks says that, that's right. You know, and I agree. So now I say that, but um, yeah, I, but I also think that, yeah, I mean, community, you know, Jesus said when two or more gathered in my name, you know, cool shit happens. Right. So, yeah, I think that's a direct quote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, so, I mean, I think that that's the truth, you know, it, and I do think that like more people that come together, we get out of the matrix, so to speak. We realize that like, and I think, you know, I love this podcast. I love what you do. I think that the, the being brave is such a great thing because yeah, I think, you know, when I, when you first asked me, I thought, you know, just being alive is being brave. Yeah. And um, absolutely. Getting out of the matrix is even more being brave, you know, like getting out of this little world that, you know, and that doesn't mean that you can't work a full time job and make lots of money and not and be and, and be stuck in the matrix. Right. It, it's it's a consciousness thing. Right. It's not a. uh it's not a detailed thing. It's not like, uh, you know, what you do, it's how you do it. It it's feels how you like feel why you're doing it. Yeah. And it feels like a taking your power back. It's yes. remembering that you have power. So totally. my last question for you is if you had kind of one message that you just one message that you could send to like, everybody on the planet like if you could just infuse their knowing with this one thing um that you feel would help them what would you want people to know uh i guess can you imagine uh an unconditionally loving god can you imagine a limitless unconditional loving god uh, imagine all the times that you felt very loved. Can you imagine that there's a vibration out there that's infinite, that is that vibration? And can you imagine and feel yourself integrating and merging with that vibration? So can we, like the first thing I do with all my clients is I do an open heart meditation, smiling heart meditation that really inspires people and they love it. And it's just about, going into your heart, like you smile, you know, you have access 24 seven access to your smile, right? So can we imagine our heart smiling? And I can do that right now, because I do it a lot. So I'm imagining my heart smiling and anything that doesn't feel like this vibration, can I bring it in? Can I give it love? Can I, like you said earlier, loving the parts of yourself that don't feel loved. And I think that's the tool that we have as people to love ourselves. And uh, once you do that, everything just kind of works out. So that would be my message. Awesome. Mic drop. Yeah, totally. All right. To everybody that's watching, if you are interested in supporting the Being Brave with Amy B podcast, there is a Patreon that you can contribute to. There are t-shirts. Being Brave is the new perfect uh oh, for awesome. you to purchase yeah i love it and so many other ways to subscribe to the youtube channel and the podcast on anchor and spotify give a review you know, travel podcast right awesome all different ways to to support um if you'd like to support in a larger way go ahead and send me a message we're looking for sponsors and investors at all 
that align with the belief systems of being brave with Amy B. And until next time, I see you, I believe in you, and I love you. And don't forget to be brave and say yes to you, all the parts of you. Awesome. Bye.